Right now it's six. These signs promise an auction for high-end products. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. For bidding on the item of a lifetime, though, experts say buyer beware. If you can't figure out who the seller is, who's, who's doing the auction, that should raise some questions for you. The people's house could soon be off limits. We talk about access and we talk about the security and balancing those two elements. With the 2020 protests still fresh in their minds, state lawmakers debate the future of our state capital. It was an emotional experience. Those of us who care for the capital. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Shannon Nogda. We're glad you're with us tonight. Yard signs are popping up all over Denver, promising an auction with the chance to bid in some pretty nice luxury items. Is it real? The company behind it says so. Those who have attended the past say in the past say otherwise. Denver 7's Patrick Perez works to get to the bottom, a bottom of this. These blue signs scattered throughout Denver's Central Park neighborhood offer a rare opportunity. A chance to bid on items from a divorce settlement like a Ferrari, Rolexes, even Picasso paintings. Flyers sent through the mail offer the same promise, a forced auction taking place this Sunday at the Doubletree in Greenwood Village. If you're experiencing deja vu, it's because signs like these have popped up before in Denver and across the country. Here's one from 2019, and just last year in Maryland, a TV station found this flyer with nearly the same verbiage as the ones we found in Central Park. The ones here appear to link back to a company called Heritage Estate Solutions. Its website has no information about its location or who owns it, but it does have some snazzy videos of items supposedly up for auction. Who.is shows it was registered in Virginia in 2019. The only contact information for the company is an email, which we reached out to. We're still waiting for a response. We also called the number on the signs we saw. I'm with Denver 7 here in Denver, trying to get some information about this auction happening this weekend. The woman on the other line with the auction department says it's not a scam and that they do have a hotel space booked. An employee at this Doubletree confirms to Denver 7 there is an auction event happening this Sunday. But what items will really be sold there is a mystery. If you can't figure out who the seller is, who's, who's doing the auction, um, that should raise some questions for you. Edith Parrish Kohler is the owner and president of Colorado Premier Realty and Auction Services. She says most auctioneers won't advertise using yard signs like these. I, we've never done that. And however else they do advertise, they make sure you know exactly who they are and what they're selling. We are all about identification, brand identification, and having our name visible and readily accessible. It's on you, she says, to find out if the auction company is legitimate. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. And the Colorado Secretary of State says Heritage Estate Solutions is not registered to do business here. Greenwood Village, where the auction is supposed to happen, says it has no record of the company, which means it can't collect any sales tax on their auction sales. Former Douglas County School Superintendent Corey Wise has obtained legal counsel to potentially sue the school district. The board voted to fire Wise earlier this month, saying his vision for the district did not match theirs. The lawyers representing Wise have requested the district preserve any and all evidence related to Wise's firing and to prepare for litigation. A Greenwood Village nurse has turned himself in after being charged with manslaughter in the death of a patient in 2019. Greenwood Village police say Rex Maker failed to properly monitor Emmeline Wynn after administering anesthesia at Colorado Aesthetic and Plastic Surgery. Police say Emmeline was not breathing for 15 minutes and that Maker failed to call 911 after performing CPR. Wynn died following a 14 month long coma. Dr. Jeffrey Kim turned himself in earlier this week. He is now facing charges of first degree aggravated assault and criminally negligent homicide. A volunteer coach of a club sport at Arapahoe High School has been arrested for having inappropriate conversations with a female student. 22 year old Virgilio San Andres has been arrested for messages sent through social media apps and police say there were several conversations that were sexual in nature. They're asking any other possible victims to come forward. The social justice protests of 2020 left their mark on Colorado. When it comes to the state capitol, we mean that literally. Denver 7's Megan Lopez joins us from the capitol tonight. And Megan, lawmakers are debating the future of that building and a statue outside of it. That's right, Ann, and it's really a balancing act between preserving history, protecting the building itself, but also making sure that it's accessible to the public. Today, a Capitol committee really debated the future of the monument that used to be on this pedestal you see behind me, and they also talked about whether it's time to add fencing to the Capitol. 
It's field trip day at History Colorado within the walls of this museum. Not just a chance to learn about history, but to take part in it. And as far as we know at this point, we're one of the only museums that have actually done this. With an honest, sometimes uncomfortable discussion about the role monuments play in our community. Monuments help us to remember the good, the bad, and the ugly. On this wall, on these post-it notes. Personally, I think that monuments should tell stories. Monuments like these. Yes, we should have monuments. Hundreds of opinions from visitors told in their handwriting. We should not revise. Public monuments are an endorsement. Monuments are only as good as those they honor. On guard uh, was a statue erected in 1909 to commemorate veterans of the Civil War, and it was toppled in 2020. Toppled for the soldiers' involvement in the Sand Creek Massacre. Historian Sam Box saw it as an opportunity. We really wanted to lean into the controversy, and we wanted to give people an appropriate, safe place to come and learn about the history. Those comments brought here to the state capitol as a committee considers the future of the monument, trying to balance history and the atrocity these soldiers took part in. It's no surprise that for a really long time in this country, History has been presented um, from one viewpoint. For now, the monument is being housed at History Colorado. The question is whether it should stay there. A lot of the commentary said, put it in a museum, put it in context. And since Fridays are for field trips, the committee took one of its own because it's also debating how to protect the state capitol after the same protests that toppled the statue caused millions in damage to the building itself. It was an emotional experience. Those of us who care for the Capitol. There was original glass in this building that was destroyed. The graffiti damage, it was very complex. The different types of paint. Doug Platt from the Department of Personnel Administration says that restoration is still underway. Now state lawmakers are moving closer to adding a fence, a mock-up brought to the Capitol of what could be. But just like the statue, it's a balance. We always refer to the state Capitol as the people's house. We talk about access and we talk about the security and balancing those two elements. The protests of 2020 made history. They change history in a building that's no stranger to it. Now this 128 year old capital could be part of that change. So that building advisory committee didn't really like the mock up of that fence. So a redesign is definitely on the way, but they did approve previously a fence around the Capitol. As for that monument, the future of it is still going to be unknown. It's going to stay at History Colorado for now, as that committee seeks more input from veterans groups on what they want to see happen with it. I'm live, Megan Lopez, number seven. Megan, it's the state capitol tonight. Thank you, Megan. Boulder County's mask mandate is over. The Board of Health unanimously voted on Monday to end the indoor mask mandate. However, CU Boulder voted to continue masking in all indoor spaces on campus. And the mandate falls as cases and hospitalizations plummet in our state. Thursday, the state health department said now that 90% of Coloradans may have immunity to Omicron. Nationwide, 136,000 cases being reported every day, and that number was passed 850,000 just one month ago. Today, a senior advisor to the White House COVID team told Denver 7 that all signs point to a promising 2022. We're moving towards a time where we're going to be able to treat COVID uh, with strategies of prevention and protection of the vulnerable and treatment of the sick to a time where we're no, it will no longer be disruptive in our lives or as disruptive, it won't be a crisis. Now, promise aside, of course, we have seen this movie before. The White House cautions that another major variant is always possible. Meanwhile, 77 deaths were attributed to the virus yesterday alone in Colorado. Wheat Ridge High School students received a lesson on space exploration today. They got to ask questions of astronaut Raja Shari, who's aboard the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Ryan. My question is, what is the coolest thing you've seen from the space station? Uh, so I think the coolest thing I've seen is Antarctica. Uh, I think what's uh, uh, a close second is the Aurora, which the cool thing about that is you get to see it pretty much every day if you want. And so when we're at the farthest north and farthest south parts of our orbit in a night pass, if you look towards the polar regions of the Earth, uh, you get pretty much an amazing show. It's kind of like sitting around a campfire at night. Okay, that is cool. <laughs> the virtual meeting was part of a teacher was part of teacher Steve Schultz's astronomy class, and the hope was to encourage students to pursue aerospace and STEM careers. Breaking down barriers during a less inclusive time. I started on the police department in uh, 59, 1959. And his legacy is continuing to create change today. Mild and dry Saturday and Sunday, but this cold front changes everything starting Monday. Plus, always a good idea to keep your distance from a mountain lion. 